Hello and welcome to a special bonus episode of Disney Movie Investigation. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. In this bonus series, we take a look at the TV shows that we remember from years past. In this episode, we're taking a look at a Nickelodeon favorite as we take a look at the secret world of Alex Mack. And we have a special bonus story this episode as well, a bonus on a bonus, as we take a look at the history of the Nickelodeon Hotel. And if you are enjoying these videos, we do ask that you please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified with each new video. Now, sit back and enjoy this bonus episode of Disney Movie Investigation. So like I said, today we are covering The Secret World of Alex Mack. Uh, this was uh, created by Thomas W. Litch and Kid Ken Lippman. It aired on the Nickelodeon channel, and in Canada, it aired on YTV. Uh, the production companies were Lynch Entertainment, Hallmark Entertainment, and Nickelodeon Productions, and there was a total number of 78 episodes. Uh, and it aired between October 8, 1994 and January 15, 1998. In terms of the development, Thomas W. Lynch, who created the programs Night Tracks and Kids Incorporated, created the series based on real events from his childhood. Uh, Lynch's father, who was a nuclear physicist, would often work with radioactive material in the family garage, and one time a chemical spilled out of the container. The show was originally thought of Alex being a male character, but Nickelodeon had the writers change the character to a girl. The series was filmed in Valencia, California and Santa Clara in the Santa Clara Valley. And the show premiered on Nickelodeon as part of their SNCC lineup. Uh, the show lasted four seasons, and at the end of the fourth season, lead actress Larissa Olenek was offered a fifth season plus a feature film package deal, but she turned it down to move on to other projects. Uh, for those of you that have never seen the series, you may recognize her. She was uh, one of the lead characters in 10 Things I Hate About You. Uh, so in terms of the cast, like I said, we have Larissa Olenek as Alexandra Mack. Darius Love, who plays Ray Alveradero. Meredith Bishop plays Annie Mack. Michael Blakely plays George Mack. Dorian Lapinto plays Barbara Mack. John Nielsen plays David Watt. Jason Strickland plays Scott Green. Jessica Alba plays Jessica. Luann Gideon plays Danielle Atron. And John Mazzelli plays Vince Carter. In terms of the show, Alex Mack is your typical ordinary 13-year-old girl who lives with her sister Annie, her mom Barbara, and her da dad George, a scientist at the town's chemical plant. On Alex's first day of junior high, everything goes wrong, including being humiliated by the most popular girl in front of one of the most popular guys. While walking home depressed, Alex is almost hit by a truck from the chemical plant and spills a secret and illegal chemical on top of her. As a result, she develops the abilities to move objects to, uh, with her mind, shoot electric zaps through her fingertips, morph into a puddle of liquid, and glow when she gets nervous. The only ones who know about it are her sister and her best friend Ray. With their help, she must keep her powers a secret in fear of becoming the plant's guinea pig. Uh, so in terms of the legacy, um, this show had a, uh, fall, like a uh, series of young adult novels. Uh, that were created alongside the series. Uh, the first and last book were novelizations of the first and last episodes. Everything in between that was an original novel. Uh, and they mentioned plot points. The original novels do mention plot points in the show. And in total, 34 novels were created with the majority of them being written by Diana G. Gallagher and Kathy E. Stabowski. Uh, one, there was only one VHS package episode containing two episodes called Nick of Time that was released in 1995. And a complete series DVD was released in 2017 by Mill Creek Entertainment. In 2018, a 20-year cast reunion was filmed and released on YouTube. And it features uh, interviews with the cast and crew and memory, uh, cast and crew members giving memories of the show and what they are up to now. So in terms of memories of the show, um, I had very few memories of the show as, as it was on when I was younger and it didn't really catch my interest. Uh, Rewatching the show, I can see it as a positive, as, as a, it's a great transition show. It's one of those shows that's like a young teenage sitcom, but it also mixes drama with it as well. 
Um, I think the performance of Olenek and Bishop as sisters are the highlight. Uh, the sisters tend, the stories do tend to get a bit repetitive uh, as a downside, but I do like how the stories are situational and um, it is an over overarching theme to keep Alex's secret. Overall, I think this is a great show, especially for teens uh, and teen girls, um, and it shows them as empowered and it develops the characters that shows uh, that they have other interests other than boys. So I thought it was a really good kind of transition for uh, young teenage girls to transition into the kind of the further teen dramas like 90210 or Melrose Place, those type of things. So let's take a look at our bonus story. Uh, this show was a Nickelodeon show, so let's take a look at the Nickelodeon Hotel. Uh, the Nickelodeon Ho Family Suites Hotel was located in Orlando, Florida, and it was very close to Walt Disney World. Uh, it was named AAA Top 10 Family Vacation Spots in 2010, and it featured Nickelodeon characters um, uh, uh, on the outside decor as well. Uh, so in terms of the history of the, the hotel, on October 7, 2004, at a press conference, it was announced that Holiday Inn and Nickelodeon had reached an agreement uh, to re renovate one of, those ho one of their hotels in Orlando, Florida. The hotel was named the Nickelodeon Family Suites, and it would come after Holiday Inn agreed to promote SpongeBob SquarePants for the next two years. Nickelodeon had considered building its own hotel, but decided against it based on because of recent theme locations being deemed a failure. Uh, one of a great example of this, and we've recovered it in a previous video, is Club Disney. Uh, the cost to renovate the hotel with Nickelodeon branding and, car and characters cost $25 million, and the hotel officially opened on Memorial Day weekend 2005. And the plan was, if this was successful, that it would be opening four more Nickelodeon hotels around the United States. So in terms of the resort layout, the hotel had 14 six-story buildings that had a variety of room options. Uh, so there were four different room options. The first one was a one-room suite that had a king-size bed and a full kitchen. Uh, the second option was a two-bedroom suite that had a parent's room, a kid's room, a living room, and a bathroom. Uh, the kids' rooms for all of the rooms would contain either bunk beds or two kids' beds. And the kids' rooms would be themed to Nickelodeon characters such as Spongebob, uh, Jimmy Neutron. Uh, the Fairly Odd Parents were in there as well. Uh, the kids' room would also feature a TV. Uh, and some, room, some of the kids' rooms actually had a PlayStation 2. And get, guests could also rent games from the front desk. Uh, the suite also had an option of a wake-up call from a Nickelodeon character. Uh, so the third type of room was a three-bedroom suite, which contained two private parent rooms, a kid's room, a full kitchen, and two bathrooms. Uh, the last room didn't last very long, but it was called the Honeymoon Suite, and it was called Nick at Night Suites. Uh, these came with a heart-shaped whirlpool, extra-large shower, mood lighting, and a private adult room. Uh, the outside of the hotel was divided into two areas. Uh, the Lagoon Pool, which had a basketball court, mini golf, a small pool, restaurant bar, and a water park. Uh, the theme of the water park is it had a variety of slides with character cutouts, uh, but it also had a large water bucket that would dump every so often. Uh, the water would be dyed green in order to simulate slime, which is a trademark of Nickelodeon, uh, being dumped on guests. Uh, the, way, the second pool in the lagoon area was the Oasis, uh, which had a smaller pool along with a kid area and a spa. In between the pools was, build the, uh, was a building titled The Mall, and inside guests could find an arcade, a kid's spa, a gift shop, and a 4D theater that showed a SpongeBob 4D film. Uh, the theater also would show upcoming Nickelodeon movies um, and TV shows as well. Uh, the food court inside the mall contained quick service restaurants, including Pizza Hut and Starbucks. And uh, they also had other dining options, including a buffet for lunch, uh, and dinner, a Nick at Night bar, and the signature restaurant was a character dining breakfast, character dining location that served breakfast or dinner. Uh, the result would also contain a live theater, which would show live shows, uh, and they had a variety of shows throughout the history of the hotel. They would include Who Knows Best, Nick Live, and then later on Nick Double Dare You, uh, as well as Christmas themed shows featuring SpongeBob as well, SpongeBob SquarePants and the characters as well. Uh, so why did the hotel close? Uh, the hotel lasted 10 years and it was very popular. Uh, the problem was it was also very expensive. Uh, the result would be between $135 to $600 per night and then added to that expense as most families would be going to Walt Disney World on top of that. 
Um, so you're adding theme park tickets as well as transportation costs to Walt Disney World. On January 16th, uh, 2016, it was announced that Nickelodeon Family Suites would be going back to the Holiday Inn and the theming would be removed. Around this time as well, Nickelodeon had also announced a new partnership with Charisma Hotels to create Nickelodeon resorts in the tropical locations. Uh, the Holiday Inn Family Suites lasted a few more years without the Nickelodeon branding, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, causing less people to travel, the hotel fi filed for bankruptcy in 2021. So thank you so much for joining us here on Disney Movie Investigation for this bonus episode. I would invite anyone to please leave a comment below on what their favorite memory is of the secret world of Alex Mack, as well as if any of you had stayed in the Nickelodeon Family Suites Hotel, uh, please leave a comment of what your experience was. I'd be interested to find out what people thought of it. Um, so as we look forward to our next month's bonus episode, we're going to be taking a look at a Nintendo cartoon as we take a look at the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. And we're going to have, a, on top of that, another bonus story as we take a look at Super Nintendo Land in Universal Studios. So until next time, I hope you have a magical day, and we will see you real soon.